Equipped to Serve, Discover Your Ministry. In this teaching, we will look at what scriptures say about the subject of service and discover our giftedness and ministry in our service to the Lord. Ministry is using whatever God has given us to serve Him in the needs of others. Now, first of all, we could understand that every Christian is responsible to do ministry. We minister to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Secondly, we minister to other Christians. Hebrews 6, verse 10, But God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for Him and how you have shown your love to Him by caring for other believers as you still do. Thirdly, we minister to unbelievers. Matthew 5, verse 14 to 15 says, You are the sword of the, lo- of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone who prays your heavenly Father. God gives spiritual gifts to the body of Christ as He determines. It is up to us to discover and use them. A spiritual gift is not a natural talent. It is a supernatural ability given by God for service to Him and for the benefit of other Christians, the body of Christ. A spiritual gift may be linked to natural talents, but it goes beyond natural talents. Now, Paul gave three different lists of spiritual gifts, and none of the lists are the same. So it's safe to say that these lists don't include every spiritual gift, so we can't limit them to just three, these lists. The main list of spiritual gifts come from two main passages, and that is taken from Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 8, and 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 10. God doesn't gift us for our own enjoyment, but for empowerment. Our spiritual gifts are tools, not toys. My gift will bless you, and your gift will bless me. Furthermore, God doesn't consult us about our gifts. He gives us what He wants us to have. We have no choice in this matter. God knows how He made us and He knows what we are best at. So there are three basic categories of spiritual gifts. And it helps to group the gifts. No matter what our gifts is, it will fall under one of these categories to be used to build up the church. But the first category is the teaching and the leadership gifts. The first group involves leading a group, taking charge, speaking out, and presenting God's truth. Everyone is called to be evangelistic. We gotta understand this. In other words, to share the gospel. But not everyone is called to lead groups of people. So under this category, first we have the leadership gift, Romans chapter 12, verse 8. The ability to see the big picture and to bring coordination and cooperation for a common goal to God's glory. Leadership requires standing before a group, giving vision and pointing out the way. The second gift is prophecy. That is the ability to speak for God. Most people think of this gift as predicting the future when they think of the prophet. And the biblical prophets did some of that. But mostly, they reminded people of the truth God had previously revealed. So the spiritual gift of prophecy is reminding people of God's truth. In no way does this gift mean that God gives new teaching a new truth, a new revelation to people today. There is no new revelation from God. He gave us everything He wanted us to have already. We don't need a new word from God. We need to obey the scriptures, the word of God that God has already given us. Now, the third one is teaching. And that is the ability to clarify truth. The prophet declares truth while the teacher desires to explain it. Teachers like to learn, study, and present truth, and they have to stand before a group. Next one is encouragement, and that is the ability to help others grow in their faith and love Jesus more. Encouragers like to counsel others by showing the practical side of things and the action steps necessary to mature spiritually. They see problems as tools for growth. Next, we have wisdom, and that is the ability to see life from God's perspective and to share with others. Wisdom isn't intelligence or common sense. It doesn't come from education, but from God. The gift of wisdom results in helping others see what God is seeing and how they can follow Him. And the next one is discernment. And that is the ability to know 
if something is of God or of Satan. Lots of stuff that is spiritual isn't of God. Never equate spirituality with Christianity. Satan is the prince of this world and God has given him permission to work here on earth. He is the master deceiver and spirituality is one of his weapons. So this is the first category. The second category are the service gifts. Now, not every Christian is called to teach or lead a group. Some are called to serve, and that's where they find their fulfillment and passion. Jesus' life was marked by service. Every Christian is a servant and must serve, but some are called to specific roles of service. So, they are the service and ministry, and these are the, the gifts meeting spiritual needs in a practical way. People with this gift are motivated to help by doing whatever may be necessary to make a task work properly or better. Much service or ministry takes place behind the scenes and which makes it possible for those with teaching and leadership gifts to focus on their own areas of giftedness but these people don't care who gets the credit. And then we have the give of giving. Using your own resources to help others, we are all commanded to give but some people are gifted in giving. They entrust their own possessions and assets to God's work and for, for God's work. They tend to be skilled with finances and are wise in financial decisions. Next, the gift of faith. This isn't saving faith because that's common to all Christians. This is an unusual ability to trust God for special needs for a specific circumstance at that moment. Then, next is mercy. And that is the ability to identify with people, to bring comfort to those who are in distress, and to show compassion. Compassion is pity, a concern, or sympathy, or empathy for the suffering or misfortune of others. People with the gift of mercy focus on the pain instead of what the person in distress may have done. So that is the second category. And lastly, the third category is other sign gifts. Now the sign gifts were given to authenticate God's work. Today, these gifts are not normative or regularly occurring. They appear in only one book of the New Testament outside of Acts, which is not normative. And in the church, in that church in Corinth, and these gifts were causing a lot of problems. So what are these gifts? First, we have the gift of knowledge. That is the ability to know things that are impossible to know without divine intuition or revelation. Peter knew Ananias and Sapphira were lying about money, right? So that is the first one. The second one is the gift of healings. And that is the ability to bring instant divine healing to the sick and, and to the lame. God heals some people by miracle and some people by medicine. He heals some people instantly and He heals other people through time. Thank God for doctors. Dr. Liu, the man who wrote the book of Liu and X was a medical doctor. And then we have the gift of miracles, and that is the ability to perform supernatural feats. I believe God does miracles today, still today, and these are supernatural feats. And so God does miracles all the time. Maybe you've experienced something that couldn't be explained any other way. But, 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 don't go looking for people who have the gift of miracles. John the Baptist didn't do any miracles. But his ministry was second in power only to Jesus. On the other hand, Jesus did all kinds of miracles and most people rejected him anyway. People who need to see miracles to trust Jesus probably wouldn't trust him if they got their miracles. Lastly, we have the gift of tongues. And that is the ability to speak in an unknown language. Paul gave instructions for speaking in tongues in worship in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 no more than two or three people should speak in tongues. They must speak one at a time, and there must be someone to interpret what's being said. If there's no interpreter, tongues aren't allowed in a corporate worship setting. And he gave this as the reason in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, for God is not a God of disorder, but a God of peace. So the next question that we want to ask ourselves is this, how do we discover our spiritual gifts? Now, sadly, Many Christians have no idea what their spiritual gift or gifts are, primarily because they do not know or they do not do what's necessary to discover them. So there are two things that we can do to discover our gifts. The first one is that we surrender. 
Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind He will find acceptable, this is truly the way to worship Him. Surrender isn't necessary just at salvation, but daily. We need to surrender daily. We have to die to self daily. A sacrifice requires death. We have to kill our own will and surrender to God's will. We can't God can't fill us or use us when we are full of ourselves. But when we give God permission to use us however He wants, it shows us what He made us to do in the first place. Second is to serve. Romans chapter 12, verse 4 to 5 say, Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. We can serve without being surrendered, but we will not enjoy it. So first comes surrender, and then comes service. Alright, so that's the order. If you don't already know your gift, get yourself busy. Get involved. And involved means more than membership. It means being active, contributing, and the necessary part of it. You may try 10 things before you find your area of giftedness, but you will know it when you find it. So start getting yourself busy, start to serve, start getting involved. Now at this point, I want to give you five cautions to note here. First, do not confuse gifts with natural talents. Secondly, don't confuse gifts with the fruit of the Spirit. Now fruit shows our maturity, gifts shows our ministry. So don't confuse that. Thirdly, don't confuse, don't expect everybody else to have your gifts or to serve like you or to get the same result as you. We are all uniquely gifted. And fourthly, don't think that your gift makes you superior to others. We are to walk in humility as the Lord has shown us. Fifthly, know that using your gift without love is worthless. So in all things that we are to operate out of love. Alright, so next question, how to get involved in ministry? How to get involved in ministry? First, we want to minister with our abilities and interests. Now, think about how you are made. How, what do you do well? What do you enjoy doing? Where do those things overlap in what you do well and in the things that you enjoy? Now, just because you do something well, it doesn't mean you enjoy it, right? And just because you enjoy something, it doesn't mean you do it well. But there are some things you both enjoy and are good at. Okay? So it may take, for example, it may take you years to discover that you have a teaching or a leadership gift. You can be serving in other ways. And we have no excuse not to be serving in other ways. Every member should be a functioning part of our church, not just an attender. So again, start serving and in the process you will discover your gift in what you do well and in what you enjoy secondly we minister with our personality some personalities are naturally suited for some ministry but not others for example i like to illustrate this way i would like you to write your name in the space you know uh, below and right now write your name with your opposite hand and what happened the second time you wrote your name? Does this describe it? You feel very uncomfortable writing your name, you know, using an opposite hand? It took extra time and effort, right? You didn't do it very well, right? Now, the same things are true when we try to minister in areas that are unsuited to our personality. But then, there's not a right or wrong personality. God loves variety and He made us all a little different. The personality you were born with is hard to change. So, minister with your personality. So there are some things that I'd like you to think about. We are not going to do a full personality test, but consider these four questions right now. For one, how am I around other people? When you're around other people, are you more reserved or outgoing? The outgoing people are social and energized by people. Lonely when they're not with people, they're the last to leave, easily connect with strangers, and lots of relationships. Whereas for the reserved, they're drained by people, not bothered by being alone, they like solo activities, or just hang around a few people, enjoy others, but feel drained 
afterwards and they have limited relationships. So that's the first question. Second question, how do I make decisions? You see, our decisions are based on thinking or feelings. But those who are thinkers, they, they trust facts, they're rooted in reality, appreciate past experiences, notice us details, and they're very practical. For the feelers, they work on hunches and emotions more often than not. The question we ask ourselves is, how do we use our time? My use of our time is more, either more determined or spontaneous. But those who are more determined, they are fixed, they are very organized, they plan ahead and they observe deadlines. But those who are spontaneous, they are very flexible, they adapt as they go and they are open-ended. So these are the three questions we can ask ourselves. Now, next, we also minister with our past experiences. Besides ministering with our personality and also our abilities, we minister with our past experiences. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. Now, very often, our greatest potential for ministry comes directly from our past experiences, particularly our past painful experiences. God uses every experience to help others. Now think about these areas right now. First, your spiritual experiences. How you come to know Jesus. How decisions you've made both for and against God worked out. And in other words, your history with God. The next one is your painful experiences. Your problems, your hurts, your sufferings, whether you brought them upon yourself or not, and the lessons that you've learned from them. These experiences can be used by God in service unto Him. And thirdly, your experiences as a pre-believer. What was your life like before you have surrendered your life to Jesus? How is your life different now as a Christian? These experiences are very powerful in your service unto God. In conclusion, as we look at this teaching here, Equip to Serve, Discover Your Ministry, God wants you to be equipped to serve unto His glory. So do discover your ministry and you can do so in a very simple and very practical way by doing you know, a spiritual gift inventory. And then uh, you can do that, then you can discuss the result with your leaders. And so together, let's be fruitful together in our service and let's be equipped to serve as God has commanded us to and let us serve the Lord with joy and with the, our abilities, our talents, and let's do it unto, our, unto the Lord's glory. Amen? So in this um, lesson here, before we go, I would also like to give you the spiritual gift inventory. You can click on it uh, in, in, the, in the teaching in this video below. You click on it and you can do this survey and like I said, discuss this with your leaders. Let us be fruitful together in our service. Amen. Praise the Lord.